Today, let us discuss about extrinsic semiconductor. We have discussed already about intrinsic semiconductor, which is a pure semiconductor without any impurities. When we add impurities, it becomes an extrinsic semiconductor. So, when we add impurities to an intrinsic semiconductor, we form extrinsic semiconductor. So, when impurities, which are also called dopants, are added to a pure semiconductor, it results in extrinsic semiconductor. So, uh, this process of adding impurities, I mean, particular impurities, not any impurities, this process of adding impurities to an intrinsic semiconductor is called doping. And by doping, we convert an intrinsic semiconductor to extrinsic semiconductor. There are two ways of doping. First of all, we shall recognize that <coughs> pure semiconductors typically are fourth group elements. Of course, uh, I know that uh, we have polymer semiconductors, uh, several other semiconductors, but the tip most famous semiconductors like silicon and germanium, they are fourth group elements. Typically, in these intrinsic semiconductors, you have four valence electrons and uh, they form covalent bonds and achieve octet configuration. And some of the electrons jump into conduction band forming whole electron pair. However, if doped with third group elements, they become P-type semiconductors. And if doped with fourth, sorry, fifth group elements, they become N-type semiconductors. Now, P-type uh, semiconductors are basically intrinsic semiconductors doped with third group elements like aluminum, etc. And uh, N-type semiconductors are those extrinsic semiconductors which have fifth group element as an impurity. That means uh, like phosphorus, etc. Okay, so let us consider pure silicon doped with third group element that is aluminum. So what happens is that you have several silicon atoms which keep uh, forming the covalent bonds like in the typical intrinsic semiconductor that we have seen. However, if suppose the impurity that is aluminum sits somewhere here. Now let us try to understand what happens to the silicons in the surrounding. Okay, now let us not draw too many things. All others are silicons, okay. So wherever uh, I have left uh, some gap, all of them are silicons, please assume like that. Now, let us consider electrons. So, silicon has four electrons and uh, when it forms four covalent bonds, uh, the silicon gets octet configuration, you all know that. Now, okay, there is no problem as far as this silicon is concerned. Maybe this side, the left side silicon, okay, somewhere here forms a covalent bond. Okay, that is understandable. And okay, 
if you see this aluminum already has formed three covalent bonds aluminum has three valence electrons and it has formed three covalent bonds already so the silicon to the right of the aluminum has one electron okay and it wants to form covalent bond however aluminum does not have any electron and therefore that place where we wanted an electron but it is not present because aluminum has only three valence electrons and therefore it is like uh, in the fourth covalent bond with silicon there is a hole that means there is a lack of electron okay so when in the large silicon chain an aluminum comes and sits somewhere okay what happens is of the four covalent bonds uh, okay it is expected to form aluminum can form only three and uh, it leaves a hole it leaves a hole in the valence band okay because it has only three valence electrons okay now typically what is concentration of aluminum versus silicon maybe one in a million silicon atoms will have one aluminum so for one million silicon atoms okay you have one impurity that is aluminum so that is typically the ratio you should understand that it will be helpful for us in the next discussion that we are going to have okay however one most important thing is that one most important thing is that aluminum presence of aluminum forms a hole in the valence band without forming any electron in the conduction band and similarly when you have phosphorus as a impurity phosphorus it can replace silicon and it can form covalent bonds with the neighboring silicon atoms okay and after forming four covalent bonds with the neighboring silicon atoms phosphorus still has one electron left okay and uh, since already phosphorus has achieved the octet configuration it readily gives out gives away that electron okay it becomes a phosphorus phosphorus ion and gives away the electron this electron roams freely in the crystal lattice which means uh, this electron will now belong to conduction band so essentially what we need to realize is that doping with uh, doping with third group elements forms a hole without any corresponding electron in the conduction band okay so forms a hole in the valence band we can say without any corresponding electron in the conduction band similarly we can say that doping with fifth group elements will form an electron in the conduction band will create an electron in the conduction band without any hole in the valence band okay please remember that while in the intrinsic semiconductors you have equal number of holes and electrons it is not necessary in an extrinsic semiconductor okay that is what you need to realize doping with fifth group elements forms or generates or creates an electron in the conduction band without any hole in the valence band without any corresponding hole in the valence band so unlike intrinsic semiconductors number of holes and electrons need not be equal in an extrinsic semiconductor i hope you are clear with this slide 